Witchcraft Podcast. My name is Leah. Um, if you're new, hi. If you've been around for a little while, hi. Um, so this week has been really exciting. Um, last podcast I um, posted, uploaded, put up. Um, it did pretty well. The one before that did really well. Um, and it seems like the podcasts are kind of gaining um, some watchers and I'm really so excited about it. Um, the really fun thing about doing knitting podcasts is the like community, um, comments, um, you know, it's just really exciting. A, a couple of podcasters that I personally watch um, talked about my podcast on their podcast and it was just like such a like moment that felt really cool um so one of the podcasts that i really love to watch um is laika um from fiber tales and she i was watching her podcast um and i just like heard my name and i was like wow <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> um so yeah she's a really beautiful pattern designer and she makes just really pretty um, natural whimsical things um, and I love them they all have like little you know aspects of nature in, in them and they're just so so beautiful um, you should check out her podcast but you probably already watch it um, and then um, Haley from Knit Weekend she talked about my podcast on her podcast and um, yeah I just was like this is wild. It feels so fun um, to be a part of something like that. So big. Um, I live in Newfoundland, Canada, which is an island. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty big island, but there's not a really big population of people. Um, and there are like, you know, lots of people here, lots of crafters and stuff like that. But still, it's a small place. So meeting friends um that you know have things in common with you and also love to you know craft handcraft so knit you know it's it can be hard um and so it is kind of cool to be able to have this community of people that are all over the world you know um people in um the UK, people, Denmark, like all of these people I've really kind of um, connected with lately um, that I feel like if I live nearby them, we, we, we can like be friends. <laughs> uh, and I just think that's really, really super fun. So anyway, I'm just so excited this week about the podcast. I feel really inspired um, to keep doing it. Um, and yeah, so um yeah, I've, I only have like one finished item this week. Um, you know, one of my little ones was sick home and it's just been like one of those kind of weird, like we're busy weeks, but like also I don't feel like anything really happened. I didn't really have time to do things like that I wanted to do, but I didn't really, I don't know. It's just like a kind of weird week. So Anyway, I only have one finished item, but I ha I do have some really fun stuff to show you guys today. So um, we'll start with oh, I'll start with what I'm wearing. This I finished a while ago. This is the I wear this a lot. This is probably my like most worn sweater. Um, it's the Traveler's Cardigan by Lizetta, um, and it's got these like really, really cute puff sleeves. I wear it a lot. Like I feel like it's a bit stretched out even. Maybe I need to give it a new block. Um, but yeah, it's really, really cute. I knit this um, with unspun Plutilope in the natural black heather. So it's like really, really warm. I've talked about it on the podcast previously, but it's been a while since I've been podcasting. So I thought I would still just mention what I'm wearing. Um, I have these really beautiful brass buttons that are like stamped. I think that's one of my favorite 
things on the cardigan. Um, and they're like real brass. They like smell, smell metally. I really like that smell. A lot of people probably don't like it, but I like, like the smell of brass and copper and metals. Um, so yeah, this is Ozetta. I love her patterns very, very much. I went through a big Ozetta phase last year and made like five or six of her patterns. Okay, sorry, I got cut off there. Um, it, my storage was full and it wouldn't let me record anymore. So hopefully I deleted enough stuff that I can record now. <laughs> okay. Ozetta Traveler's Cardigan. Um, I love this sweater very, very much. The only thing I personally would change about it is if I were gonna do it again, I would add more buttons. And actually this is something I've learned about myself with cardigans recently, I guess, or the last time, I think this might be the last cardigan I made. Every time I make a cardigan, I mean, unless it's like a really large oversized one that the buttons don't really matter as much, but if it's one that's kind of like more of like a torso or cropped um, cardigan, I always feel like there are never enough buttons. And like, I'm not even busty, like at all. So I don't know why I always feel like, and it, you know, there's room here, but like, as you can see, there's, you know, there's always like some separation. Um, so yeah, if I were going to do this again, I would add more buttons or add them like closer together than what it calls for in the pattern. That's it. Other than that, it's a beautiful, amazing pattern. I love it very much. Um, so finished item is a hat. Um, this is the second version of this hat that I've made. Um, I showed the other one to you last week. Um, this is the two by two beanie. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and I, um, you know, I was inspired by an Instagram page called us three by the sea. Um, she's made one in a color pretty much exactly like this. Um, so I'm pretty much copying her completely, but that's okay. Um, on her Ravelry, she posts how she um, kind of changed the pattern up a little bit to give it this cute little gnome top. And I adore it so much. Okay, it looks funny now because I have little pigtails in, um, but generally it looks very, very cute. Um, this, I'm really happy with how this color looks on me. I feel like it's so much more colorful and bright than something I would ever wear. But I like the contrast of the brightness of it. I really like it a lot. Um, and I feel like this color is kind of trending this year and I don't usually go, you know, with trending colors, but I just, I saw it so much that it grew on me and I am really happy with it. Um, yes. So I have fabric coming from Blackbird Fabrics to knit a matching bag. Um, and I'm really, really excited for that. It's the bestie bag. Um, it's really cute. Probably talked about it last week. I feel like with doing more videos, there's going to be more and more overlap about talking about the same things. And hopefully that doesn't get too boring. Um, I should probably kind of write down what I've talked about, but I won't. Not, not this time anyway. So that's my hat that I'm super excited about. Um, I'm currently working on a couple of projects. I'm still working on my Rota cardigan by Anna Svalbard. Um, and when I'm working with fingering weight yarn, I like to put it on this little wooden thing that I have here, it spins. Um, I just, I love it. I feel like it's so nice to not have your wool like in a bag having to kind of tug and pull, um, especially like this yarn is, it doesn't break easily, but it's um, really rustic, fingering weight, and it's only singular, single ply, it's like one spun. So it even like, it, continues to kind of roll up on me while I'm knitting with it a lot, which no big deal. Um, 
so yeah i um, this is this wool is wild in the woods um it's a canadian wool um from british columbia it is lovely to work with i'm super happy with how it's knitting up um it's just the right amount of rustic i like rustic so this is like definitely if you're if you're a big superwasher merino fan this isn't going to be your thing but I love rustic wools for multiple reasons. One of one of the reasons is that it like never pills. Um, I find um, I find my knitwear that I knit with really rustic wools hold out much longer. Um, they don't come out of shape easily. Um, they're just more long lasting. They're more hardy, which you know makes sense. I still love you know soft wools, merino and stuff. I love that for um, you know really close wear um you know t-shirts close up sweaters whatever um but yeah so this is the rota cardigan i'm knitting the sleeve now on double pointed needles which i used to always do sleeves uh, magic loop but ever since i started using double pointed needles to make socks i've started doing my sleeves with double pointed needles and i just i love them I love the wood. I love the way they look. I think they're just so like, just, I don't know. It just feels like this is, this is how knitting used to happen. And I kind of like that idea. So anyway, I just tried this on yesterday to get like a body fit before I started on the sleeves and it fits really, really cute and adorably. Um, I'm going to wear this with my skirt my tie skirt that I made my women's skirt so it's like really cropped I did the body a little bit longer than um, the pattern calls for I think it calls for maybe 12 centimeters and I think I did 16 um, I have a bit of a long I like cropped clothes but I have kind of a long torso so I always do a little bit longer than it says in the pattern um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Hopefully I'll get the sleeves and the button band done this week and then I can wear this beauty. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, yeah, really great, well-written pattern. I'm very happy with it. Um, I've mentioned a couple of times that I'm knitting socks for my husband for Christmas. So I really tried hard this week to try to get some done, but like this sock is really big. And I like to knit socks for myself because it's like a pretty quick project that you can throw in your bag. But this thing is like, this thing is like a tube top. Like it's humongous. This thing is so big. <laughs> so I think, I think it even might be a little bit too big for my husband. So I think what I'm going to do when I'm finished is I'm going to put them in the like lightly, very, very, very lightly felt them in the washer maybe. Um, and see if that will snug them up a little bit. But these are knit with Let Lopi and um, Knitting for All of Mohair. And I really like how they look. I think they look really great. Um, yeah, I didn't really do like a particular pattern for these. I've just been, um, you know, just been doing like a, you know, socks, cast them on, knit them. Um, so yeah, I'm on the foot of the second one. I hope to have these finished this week also. So that would be great. Um, what else? So uh, last week I showed you guys, um, I got a Turkish spindle and some wool. I got some wool from 100 acre wool farms in Nova Scotia, which is in Canada too. And this wool is, I don't know, I've never felt such soft rustic wool before. It's really so beautiful. Um, I'm really, really happy with this process. So I had never spun before and I was even nervous about just like taking wool off of this to see like, how do I, how much do I take off? How do I hold it? But I did it because, you know, when you want to do something, you just have to like, go for it. Like, don't be afraid, try it. And if you completely ruin it, that's okay. Um, so I have to say, I've done a lot of crafting in my life, you know, a lot of different things, 
knitting, crocheting, sewing, weaving, um, felting, uh, I've done leather work, spoon carving. That one's kind of hard. Spoon carving is it's really, really fun, but it, you know, there's like a pretty good big learning curve of how to not completely F it up. But of all of the crafting and fiber arts that I've done, I really feel like, and maybe I just don't remember how hard it was to learn to knit because I did learn to knit at a very, very young age. I've been knitting my whole life. So maybe I just don't really remember how difficult it was, but I feel like all of these things have really come naturally to me. And probably that's why I like to do them so much because I don't find them very difficult. Like sometimes frustrating, sometimes like, whoa, that's crazy. Like, how do I do that? But I feel like I figure it out pretty quickly. And this drop spindling, I think, has had the biggest learning curve for me of any of the crafting that I've ever done. Um, this is hard. I watch some people on um, Instagram and YouTube, like, you know, um, Tangled in Starlight and Andrea Mowry, um, you know, they, they show Carrie Cherry, where I got this spindle from, they show all of these like, you know, videos of spinning and dang, they sure do make it look easy because this is not really very easy. <laughs> I mean, just for me, it's hard. And like, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So like, you know, the fact that the, the, the yarn that's going on here is like all these different sizes, it's like fat and skinny. And then I drop the spindle and I have to start it again and put the wool back on. And then if there's like this weird, like fat part where I join the wool and I'm like, yeah, this is hard, <laughs> but um, the past day or so, I feel like I kind of am getting the hang of it a little bit. So, um, I guess Andrea Mowry has this like hundred day of spindle spinning. Um, well, obviously it's not a knit along, but it's like a spin along. And I was inspired by this watching everybody kind of join in to do it myself. I guess I can't really join in cause I'm really late in the game. I think they're already on like day 60 something maybe. But this is where I got the inspiration to learn. I had always wanted to, but just seeing everybody else do it so much made me want to. And now that I kind of sort of have the hang of things, it's becoming more enjoyable. And I'd like to get some more wool to be able to um, really be able to, you know, I'd like to have enough wool that I can spin it and, and like really use it for something. Um, so yeah, this is what I have so far. It's probably not gonna, probably not gonna do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's some really fat bits and some skinny bits. Um, but I think it's getting like, more and more even as I go along. And so yeah, I hope to keep doing this. It's really fun. Um, it's nice to, I, I like to walk and knit, but I think I, I like imagine myself when the weather gets a little bit nicer, going on little hikes and bringing my spindle and doing a little bit of spinning while walking and uh, kind of feeling as though I'm like, you know, I just, I love the idea of like connecting with my ancestors um, in, in this form where, you know, we're making these things um, the old fashioned way. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I always prefer to do things the, the original old fashioned way. It, it feels really fun. Um, and I like the slow meditative aspect of it. But yeah, I have to say, this is <laughs> biggest learning curve. And I'm, I'm gonna keep trying and hopefully I can make bobbins or little turtles as pretty as like other people do that I watch. Um, and 
that's pretty much it for the crafting today. Um, I think that's really all I have to show. Um, another really cool thing that I got in the mail this week is, um, and I, sh I already did a little video on Instagram, but um, I got this box from Hearthcraft Brooms and I hope I can chunk away a little bit of time to do this this week. Um, but anyway, it's a make your own broom kit. So it comes with, um, and the packaging is like so beautiful. Oops, oh my gosh, I'm a mess. Look at that, I'm dropping everything. Um, I'm not even gonna edit that stuff out. Like, I am a blooper, it's okay. So, it's got this, I think, holds the broom like together. And then, like while you work on it, and this is the broom corn. Um, it's like, you know, real broom stuff. So this isn't like a, a large size broom that you sweep your floor with. You can get kits like that. Um, but just to try, I wanted to do, this is like a smaller kind of like, um, duster or altar broom. I think I will probably hang it up on my wall somewhere, but I still want to use it. Um, I want to use it and I also want it just to be a really cool decoration in my house. So it'll be like a best of both worlds kind of thing. Um, anyway, I'm so excited about this. Um, so that's that. That's my plan for the week. Hopefully do my broom. Um, I'm also going to hopefully finish my Rota cardigan, my husband's socks, do some more spinning. Um, I also would really like to, um, I just recently started watching, um, the podcast Pat Weaver and I love her podcast. It's really friendly and, and fun and enjoyable to watch. It's kind of like having a chat with a friend more than just like a look what I've done kind of podcast. Um, and I, I... I love it. I think it's really super fun. Um, and she has a Discord channel, so there's like a knit night this week, and I think I'm going to try to join that. Um, so yeah, those are my crafting plans for the week. Um, I would love to know what your crafting plans for the week are. Please comment down below. Um, I really love reading comments um, and getting, um, you know, ideas and tips and tricks and advice. If you have any spinning advice, please <laughs> send it my way. Um, and yeah, like and subscribe to my channel and all that um, YouTube-y stuff. Um, I'm so happy to get to spend time with you all. And I hope you have a super great crafty week. Bye!